pastime often played out on the floor of the Cotton Bowl. The game has been the stage for names lodged in our deepest memory. Baugh and O'Brien, Lane and Walker and Rote, Heisman winners and Hall of Famers. Individuals have made this game their own, but so has one team, the University of Texas, whose cry of hook'em horns became part of college football lore. A golden age began in 1960 under Darrell Royal. The stock was at an all-time high in the Earl Campbell era, but when the Heisman winner moved on, the annual Cotton Bowl trip became a rarity. Texas called upon a native son, a player during Royals' glory days. David McWilliams has guided a rapid and surprising ascent. His Longhorns attracted little preseason notice, but at season's end, more than the eyes of Texas are upon them. Now the revived Longhorns meet one of the powers that be. Miami, not so long ago, lost in the haze of mediocrity, has dominated college football in the decade of the 80s. In 1983, Miami won its first national title under Howard Schnellenberger, with quarterback Bernie Kosar leading a sophisticated offense. Kosar gave way to Testa Verde. Schnellenberger was followed by Jimmy Johnson and another national championship featuring a primal scream defense. And last year, Dennis Erickson brought Miami its third ring of the decade with the arm of Craig Erickson and a posse of talented receivers. These Miami teams have come to relish the limelight, often saving their best for last, when the taste of victory is most sweet. The national title may elude them this year, but Miami will take pride in denying Texas its chance. A matchup that could determine the national champion. It's fourth ranked Miami against number three, Texas. Good afternoon and Happy New Year, everyone. I'm Andrea Joyce, and we're about 15 minutes away from kickoff of the 1991 Mobile Cotton Bowl Classic. You know, it was back in 1937, 55 years ago, that Dallas oil man Curtis Sanford started this game with his own money. On everyone's mind this week, though, the weather. It has been absolutely frightful. Below freezing temperatures that have interrupted and canceled team practices. Today, however, the conditions are expected to be tolerable. The sun is out. It's about 35 degrees, and we are expecting it to go up to at least the upper 40s. Downright balmy here in Texas today. Well, we may be in the dead of winter, but this is a rebirth of sorts for number three, Texas. And for more on that, let's go outside the Cotton Bowl Stadium to Jim Nance. Jim? Andrea, this is a very familiar sight for the Texas Longhorns. They have played in this New Year's Day Classic more than any other school. Today, it'll be the 19th time the Longhorns have played in the Cotton Bowl Classic. However, their first since 1984. This season has stirred up memories of the legendary days of coach Darrell Royal. And one of his former pupils has led him here. He's David McWilliams, a cowboy boot-wearing, unlit cigar-chewing Longhorn who one time led and captained the Longhorns to a national championship. It was McWilliams who coined the phrase this year for Texas, whatever it takes. I've been wanting to do this for our players. I wanted them to have the same opportunity I did. When I was at Texas, uh, I had an opportunity to play on some great football teams. I wanted the players to see how emotional this is to be up there at the top and have a chance to 
play in the Cotton Bowl, to have a chance for a national, the people to talk about you as a national champion possibility. So my satisfaction has come from seeing the players. My whole life is for those players. David McWilliams started this season on the hot seat. The Longhorns had endured back-to-back -back losing seasons for the first time in 50 years. However, he led them to nine straight wins in the Southwest Conference Championship. You know, they had another battle cry other than just whatever it takes. It was shock the nation. And as the Longhorns sit and wait in the locker room before this game, they believe to a man that's what they'll do today against Miami. Shock the nation. Andrea? And, Jim, about 40 feet from the Texas locker room, the Miami Hurricanes, the defending national champions, getting ready for their first Mobile Cotton Bowl appearance. And we will be back from the Mobile Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, in a moment. Football, hearing all those Texas fans sing the eyes of Texas. I'm joined now by my college football today colleague this season, Mike Francesa, who raced out of El Paso after yesterday's John Hancock Bowl to be with us today. I'm glad you made nice it. Nice to be here. Let's talk a little bit about today's game. The Cotton Bowl hasn't produced the national champion since 1978. What road does Texas have to take to get to the national title? Texas needs a Colorado loss, a Georgia Tech loss, and a win over the Hurricanes. But in my estimation, Miami will provide an immovable roadblock today. What about Miami? Is there a road the Hurricanes? can take. No, it's a dead end as far as I'm concerned. They would need a tie in the Orange Bowl because Miami needs Notre Dame to win. And if Notre Dame wins, it'll have beaten Miami. They'd have the same record. It'll have beaten number one on New Year's Day. It would jump Miami in the polls. There are four teams that can win it. Colorado, Georgia Tech, which may have been bolstered today by the fact that it's been reported that Nebraska suspended five players for the game. And of course, Texas here and Notre Dame. Those four can win it. So no repeat for the Hurricanes. The team of the 80s doesn't win it this year. All right, Mike, we will hear more from you at halftime. And now as we get ready for kickoff, let's begin with reports from the gentleman who will be covering all of the action for you. First, our game analyst, Tim Brandt. Tim? All right, Andrea, today we'll see the same team, the same speed that powered Miami to three national championships over the last seven years. What's unusual is Texas will try to cover them one-on-one, -on -one, man for man, all over the field. And you don't see that very often anymore in college football. You'll see a lot of zone, maybe some combinations, man and zone, but you don't see one-on-one, -on -one, man for man. If you look at this illustration, it may be an oversimplification, but it shows you that every offensive player is locked onto. It's a challenge for both the defense and the offense because you don't see it very often. Very rarely see a lot of man-to-man, -man, uh, bump and run type defenses. So, you know, looking at this, I look at it as a challenge, and I look at it as, a, as it maybe being a very fun game for me. Uh, we feel like real men play man, and uh, they do it for the entire game. So we're excited about playing man against them. We're not going to change our defensive scheme just because we're playing Miami. I think it's pretty hard to stop me. I don't want to say that any one man or any one player is invincible but you know I think with my overall talents and my God-given ability that it's hard that I'm hard to be to stop I'll tell you this Texas will have to generate a great push from its defensive front four to protect that secondary but the Longhorns say they will continue to shock the nation but Miami says they will rely on their experience the experience that made them the team of the 80s for more on that let me take you backstage now to my colleague John Dockery Doc Tim, you're so right. Miami dominated the 80s with glamorous stars like Jim Kelly, Bernie Kosar, Vinny Testaverde. This year's team is no different. They have talent at the skill positions, but the pillars upon which Miami are built are really a couple of guys from Chicago who were passed over by the Midwest Powers. Defensive tackle Russell Maryland, the Outland Trophy winner as the best interior lineman in the country this year. I watched the guys that have played before me, you know, and I've taken a little bit from every guy that uh, has played before me, and that's all hurricane football put together and then I try to just show the, the younger guys you know this is the way that the game should be played another Miami leader is offensive tackle Mike Sullivan who understands the college experience I think that 
myself and Russell and, and, and Rob Chudzinski and a lot of other guys around here have made it okay now to, to go ahead and hit the books as hard as we've hit the field. You know, I was as, as excited about that as, as really any victory that we had on the field. Um, I would never tell any guys on my team that, but that's just the way it was. I mean, we were happy that we were able to come in here when the school was kind of struggling a little bit image-wise, and I think we've been able to do a little bit to turn it. Mike Sullivan, Russell Maryland, two fifth-year seniors, part of the new image at Miami, Miami Nice. And Jim, for the record, this week in Dallas, Miami's behavior, perfect. To you, Jim Nance. All right, Doc, we'll continue the walk down the ramp. Wesley Carroll, number 81, will be a player to watch today. He's their top receiver. It's be Miami's first appearance in the Cotton Bowl. Dennis Erickson, his second season at Miami, led them to a national championship in his first year. We've got 7,500 fans, but a crowd today dominated by Texas Longhorn faithful. Coming down the ramp with David McWilliams. to play in this game for a record 19th time with hopes of a national championship. to the sidelines. Been a lot of discussion this week. Emotionally, how will Miami come out of this game since realistically their, their chances of winning the championship, winning it all, are very slim. Everyone feels the emotional edge belongs to Texas. Craig Erickson, the quarterback. Mike Sullivan to your right, flanked by Maurice Crum. Charles Farms, number two. He's a Texan. Let the uh, caps come up a little bit, man. Just a little bit. There you go. Oscar Giles and Stanley Richard. Kerry Cash. Alan Murray from Mobile, chairman. Mr. Murray is going to call the coin. If he comes up Texas, you win. If he comes up Miami, you win. That is the draft. All right. Miami, Miami you win the call. Look the call. Miami wins the call. They'll defer. Texas, Texas receive, which shows the fifth. Put your back over there. Texas, put your back over here. Texas, 
Taking this direction. All right, let's All go. Right, let's go. Strength is good job, baby. We'll see Peter Gardere and Texas on offense first. It's orange on orange. Bright orange against burnt orange in the Mobile Cotton Bowl Classic coming up next. Mobile Cotton Bowl Classic is sponsored by Mobile. Drive your engine clean with Mobile Super Unleaded Plus. Ultra Slim Fast, give us a week, we'll take off the weight. Cotton Incorporated for America's cotton growers. Cotton, the fabric of our lives. And by Oldsmobile. Stop by and see what's new from the new generation of Olds. Carlos Huerta of Miami will kick to start the game. Excellent place kicker for the Hurricanes. He did have one run back this year. Actually, two for touchdowns. One by Russell White of California and one by the Rocket that really cost him against Notre Dame. Adrian Walker and Chris Samuels on the return for Texas. Kick comes to Samuels from the goal line. Smashed at the 14. Robert Bailey knocked him down hard at the 14. Peter Gardere, a sophomore quarterback from Houston, Robert E. Lee High School. And what a quarterback and a season he has had, although somewhat of a slow starter. Samuels, who just returned that kick, will be in the backfield with had not Jim. And Samuels got up and tried to run off the field as you look at Johnny Walker and Keith Cash, two key receivers for Texas. And, of course, the Cash twins. Carey could be the most dangerous in the key to this attack. But Samuels, as I was saying, got up to run off the field after he was hit and then went back down after two steps. There he is. He just got to get those cobwebs out. Could have been one of the biggest hits, obviously, that we've seen all year. You could hear it up here. What a message sent right away by Miami. Well, it was Bailey that got to him. Watch this. Bang, right there, helmet to helmet. And that's the one that put the cobwebs up there in a hurry. So Adrian Walker comes in for Samuels, who will sit out now the first play. He was the expected starter. But it's Walker and Butch Hadnock, a freshman sensation. Running play with Walker. He comes out of a pile and gets to the 17 for a gain of three. It's Robert Bailey again on the tackle. He made the hit on the kick. Todd Smith is the center, a former walk-on. Miller and Boyd are the guards, and outside of them, you've got Johnson and Stan Thomas. Thomas is the key. Texas wants to run right at Russell, Maryland, and they'll do it behind number 58, Jeff Boyd, and 51, Stan Thomas. They're All-American. Over 2,000 yards, Peter Gardere, second and seven. Had not. Upended at the 23. It'll be third and one, and he was tackled by Bailey. Bailey has made the first three tackles of this game. And let's set the Miami defense starting up front with that massive defensive line, Russell Maryland and Shane Curry. On the ends, Anthony Hamlet and Rusty Medeiros, a freshman from Missouri who has come on. Michael Barrow is the middle linebacker. Maurice Crum and Darren Smith join him. It's third and one for Texas from the 24. Lining up in the eye. Walker. And a tackle by Crum and a loss of two. Jim, the tackle was made by Crum, but the play was made by Bailey, number 23. Bailey got instant penetration, forced the play to go wide, and consequently, that's when Crum came up and made the play. But watch number 23 on the left of your screen come through. He's in there right now, forces everybody wide. Crum skates down the line and makes the tackle. In the punt is Alex Waits, an all-Southwest Conference punter, averaging nearly 43 yards per punt. Kevin Williams on the return. Left-footed boot, didn't catch it, and it goes out of bounds near the 50. Miami set up now from its own 49, and there are flags 
as a little altercation takes place near the Miami bench. Well, the play carried off the field and over to the bench. You know, it's interesting, Jim, looking early on here. We thought Texas would have the emotional lead with a 10-1 record and playing for the national title, but early on, it looks like Miami came out and is really setting the tone for this game. Chad McMillan, number 77 of Texas, snapped it and then came downfield in the coverage and was taken out of bounds aggressively. But we have a dead ball. Personal foul. White. And Miami got flagged for the. We have no dead ball. Non contact foul. Unsportsmanlike conduct. White. Total of 30 yard penalty. The first and 40. Two penalties against Miami on the play. And the officials sending a message to Miami of their own. Oh, I don't think there's any question about it. Of course, Miami's got that reputation. They want to keep this game under control. The Hurricanes come out, try to set the tone. Emotionally, they're ready. Hey, if you're a Texas fan, don't be disillusioned by that first offensive series. The Longhorns have been slow starters all year. As a matter of fact, the coaches joke that they're going to give their halftime speech in the pregame from now on in. Today's officiating crew, as you see, it's first and 40 for Miami. The, today's crew is from the SEC. Lamar Thomas on the catch at the 20. And out to the 33-yard line. Brian Jones on the tackle after a gain of 14. Erickson completes pass number one. Two-year starter who led them to the championship a year ago. The fullback, Steve McGuire, will go with three receivers, Randall Thrill Hill and Lamar Thomas, along with Wesley Carroll, who he walked down the ramp with. Interesting first play against that man defense as you look at the tight end to Zinski, and he could be a factor today, but they ran underneath and tried to rub the guys off one-on-one. -on -one. Everyone out of the backfield, second and 26. Erickson again, and there's Carroll at the 41. Coverage by Stanley Richard. So it'll be third and 18 coming up for Miami. Carroll caught 61 passes this year for almost 1,000 yards. Scored the go-ahead touchdown last year on New Year's Day in the Sugar Bowl against Alabama. Kevin Williams has come in as a receiver on third and 18. Going long for Kevin Williams. There is a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Double coverage on Williams by Lance Gunn and Grady Kavnis. Miami will get another third down play. It'll be third and 13 after the offside penalty against the Longhorns. Again, this is an SEC crew. Lined up in neutral zone, five yard penalty. Jimmy Harper, the referee, explaining. Word from the Texas bench is that Samuels on that kickoff return where he was really hammered, obviously took a blow to the head, but that's what they're sending up to us, and they expect he will return to the game. Third and 13 with trips to the right. Spencer, first down Miami at the Texas 29. Daryl Spencer with a gain of 24. well-designed play this time what Miami's doing early is they're taking their wide receivers crossing them all the way across the field this way they think they can get that easy leverage early on the secondary and you saw the Richard got caught late watch the pass protection up front from Cristobal Handy Jones there's Searcy look at McGuire number 30 he comes up and just knocks him right out of the picture that was Shane Drenetti hit Great blocking, great execution on a crossing pattern. Remember, it was first and 40, and Miami gets the first down. Now they run it with McGuire, and he gains about two. Tackled by James Patton. 
Jim, Texas wants to force Erickson either throw earlier than he wants to with pressure or make him hold it longer than he wants to because of good coverage. Take him out of his rhythm, but so far, Erickson's had his time, been able to find his receivers. Leonard Connolly comes out of the backfield now in motion on second and nine. Randy Bethel in a tight end. Erickson has a man open. Did it get there on one hop? He got it. A reception by Wesley Carroll at the 10 and a gain of 17. I don't know if it was the pregame hype or what, but right now Texas is in a man, but they're playing soft. They aren't coming up. They aren't covering. It's almost a catch, read, and react type thing. You see the All-American Richard there, 18, saying no catch. He's 10 yards behind the receiver. He's got the lock on him. Look at the protection. Look at the blocking. Oh, Leon Searcy, 73. He just comes up and throws Giles to the ground. Erickson says, that's right, we're moving. So far, it's been all Miami. Erickson, four for four for 64 yards. As their march continues, first down near the 10. Conley gets away from the loss and back to the line of scrimmage. Leonard Conley had been suspended from the team for the last two games of the regular season, but now returns. He's the number three all-time rusher at Miami behind Otis Anderson and Alonzo Highsmith. Now, you talked about that offensive line, Darren Handy. Well, he used to be a guard. He has excellent feet. He's 278 pounds, both sides of him, Jones and Cristobal. Cristobal is probably the strongest guy on that line. And there's Old Sullivan, the most experienced lineman. And we've already seen Searcy throw Giles to the ground. Watch Lamar Thomas at the bottom of your screen. They like to throw it high for him. He has great jumping ability. Second down and 10. They're going the right side instead, and the ball was deflected. Intended for Spencer. You know what happened? I think he was looking into the corner with the timing pattern for uh, Randall Hill way up at the top, saw that he was covered, and all of a sudden tried to pull it down. He was indecisive and pulled the string on it, trying to get it to Spencer. Spencer's from Merritt Island, Florida. Made the first down catch earlier in this drive. So now it's third and 10 for the Kings. Here's the pass play we talked about. Incomplete. There is a flag down. That was actually intended for Leonard Conley with Kavnis on the coverage, but we've got another penalty marker. Illegal motion, offense. So David McWilliams defense able to come up with some plays in the scoring zone to prevent Miami from getting in the end zone. They'll bring out Carlos Huerta for a field goal attempt. Over 80% this year, Huerta, he's a great one. This is 28 yards away. And a kick is good. Miami drives on his first possession. And that's a field goal from Carlos Huerta. Welcome back to the Cotton Bowl as Miami takes a 3-0 lead over Texas. 75,000 strong, not a seat empty in the house. Interesting contrast before the game. People have been talking about Miami and their behavior all week. Miami nice. Well, right before the game, we saw a little of that feistiness, a little of that confidence, a little of that arrogance from Miami as they traded barbs with some of the fans coming out. You get a sense that Miami was feeling they had cabin fever all week long, and this is a the time they're going to let it out. They seem ready, Jim Nance. That's right, Doc, and that was a, a question we all had this week. Would they be emotionally ready, or would they come out and play like they did against San Diego State emotionally? You give the Aztecs credit. They gave them a great game, and a fall down by Willie Mac Garza all the way back at the two. Now, he was in to replace Chris Samuels, who was injured on the opening kickoff. 
Garza has not returned a kickoff all year. He's only had one punt return. That was for five yards down on the field prior to the game. The field is wet. It's slick. It's an excellent turf. It's in pretty good, pretty good shape, but it's been frozen most of this week. It's wet right now, and obviously it's slick, and Garza goes down. Inexperienced Garza, I should say, too. Samuels has come back in for the Longhorns. He's on a wing to the left on first down from the three. Hadnot. No gain. Russell Maryland on top of that pile. Jim, I'm going to tell you right now, Texas cannot outrun Miami defense sideline to sideline. The Longhorns have to go straight ahead and look for cutback lanes against that aggressive overrunning defense. They've got to get the blocks up front and go. Roland Smith starts in one corner. Robert Bailey with some tremendous plays already is at the other side. The safeties are Darrell Williams and Charles Farms, a junior from Houston. Samuels making an adjustment on the freshman Hadnot's chin strap. Second down and 10 out of the end zone. Gardner's first pass intended for Walker. Johnny Walker's their leading receiver. He wasn't looking for that one, wasn't expecting the ball that quickly. But Gardner had backside pressure and had to unload it faster than he wanted to. You know what's ironic about Johnny Walker? He's their leading receiver, 40 receptions, but has yet to catch a touchdown pass. He's wide to the left on third and 10. They run it with Hadnot. And doubled up by Barrow and Crum. Barrow and Crum, a pair of the linebackers, forced Texas to punt. There's a man closing his career today, a sparkling career for Maurice Crum. Gardere and company head to the sidelines, still looking for their first first down. Alex Waits, his first punt traveled only 29 yards. Kevin Williams back at the 45. He may have fumbled on the back end of that. He did. They're going to say they whistled it down. They're going to give it to Miami, but I'm not sure. Outstanding hit, Jim, on the back side by Bo Robinson. You see Alex Waits, the punter, is in there as well. When the ball was free, but watch now, Kevin Williams, did he fumble? He was fumbling on the way down. Absolutely, that's a fumble. Robinson hit him from the back side. His left hand knocked the ball loose. Should have been a fumble. There is no instant replay in college football. If there was, this play would be overruled. It's a tremendous break for Miami, and the Hurricanes are set up now in Texas territory at the Longhorn 48. 3 nothing Miami, midway, first quarter. For the city of Dallas, unlike its neighbor to the south, Houston, where they're accustomed to seeing hurricanes every now and then. Up this way, it's usually tornadoes instead of hurricanes, but a whirlwind start for Miami. Now let's set Texas defensively. Shane Dronette and Oscar Giles, he's an all-Southwest Conference player. Both of them are. Middle linebacker Brian Jones, very active. Boone Powell, Anthony Curl. And you like this secondary, don't you, Timmy? I do, because they're gutsy. They can get beaten on a play. They come right back. They'll talk to you, and they, they don't let it bother them. Stanley Richards, as good as they come, he'll be a first-round draft pick in the National Football League. This is a defense led by its seniors, Giles Jones and Richards. First and 10, Miami. McGuire with a hole. And picks up another first at the 37 of Texas. Leon Searcy with a lead block and a gain of 11. See, Texas is going through a learning experience right now. They've had teams run on them successfully. Texas A&M ran on them and ran successfully, but that was more of an option type thing. Miami comes in, and this is really the first team that Texas has played against that can run and pass as well as each other. They're very effective, very balanced. Randy Bethel alternating with Chudzinski at tight end. On first and 10, play action. Erickson with great time. Oh, almost intercepted. It was the Sheriff. As Gunn looks on. Stanley Richard, the Sheriff, almost had 
A quick six. Should have had it. Did everything right. Stayed in the hip pocket. Red Erickson. Then broke on the football. Should have had the pick right there. And he was looking at the end zone, reading the headlines instead of tucking the football away. But he's as good as you find. We just talked about him. He was moved to free safety from cornerback. And he is a better free safety than he was a corner. Second down and 10 from the Texas 37. McGuire, no game. Tommy Jeter and Brian Jones forcing Miami to a third and ten situation. The thing about Texas up front, take a guy like Tommy Jeter who just made that play. He's 6'5", 263, and I tell you that as a point of reference because he is extremely quick. He's as quick as any linebacker you'll see. Three receivers to the right on third and ten. Conley in the backfield as the single back. Erickson to Bethel. Makes the catch, but way short of the first. Boone Powell with a good tackle. And they've already brought out Carlos Huerta. Watch the Look tackle they, by Powell. They, they take three, three receivers out there, try to stretch the defense, and then they try to lock on and get an oscillation on the linebacker. They do that with Powell. But Powell's an overachiever. He is the best linebacker cover guy Texas has. Did an outstanding job that time and saved the first. This is a 50-yard attempt for Huerta. He's made a 52-yarder this year. Joe Moore on the hold. Kick, is it long enough? Yes, and it's good. Prior to the game, Huerta made four out of four from 53 yards, looked at his coach and said, that's enough. I'm on, coach. I've got a strong leg today. He turned around, he walked off. Comes on, he's got two already in this game. Well, the Cotton Bowl in 1960 determined a national champion. Syracuse met Texas, and the Orangemen scored on the second play from scrimmage, an 87-yard pass from halfback Gersh Wades to Ernie Davis. That gave Syracuse the edge. They would maintain throughout the day. Texas got on the board in the third quarter when Bobby Lackey hit Jack Collins for a 69-yard touchdown. But it was not enough as Syracuse won the championship here in the Cotton Bowl and halfback Ernie Davis leading him to victory in the national title. It was orange against orange on that day, just like today. Huerta's 50-yard field goal ties the Cotton Bowl record for longest field goal, tying Greg Gant of Alabama. 1973. His longest is 52 yards. He's had three over 50. Garza again having trouble on the return. He'll down it for a touchback. He had slipped on the last kick back at the three. You know what's ironic, though? This will be the best field position even after the muff for Texas all day. They've had poor field position the first two drives, started on their own 14 and their own three. So this muff will bring it out to the 20. Texas still looking for its first first down. They'll nope. send Samuels into a slot formation to the right. Walker wide to the right. Cash to the left. Now everyone out of the backfield. Gardere felt the heat from Darren Smith first. Score it as a sack back at the 15. You have to wonder what it is about a team that causes them to be such slow starters. I mean, this has been the trend throughout the entire season. Gardere starts slowly every single game. They started calling him Peter the Late. He had some late heroics along the way, including one right here in the Cotton Bowl this season against Oklahoma. Fourth down touchdown pass to beat the Sooners. Second and 15. Another sack. Russell Maryland. Boy, there's your All-American. 
There's your Outland Trophy winner. Played with Bone Spurs this year. Look at him. Comes to a double team, splits the double team, and then with one arm, his left arm, he takes Gardner down. His 12th sack of the year. He's from Chicago. His name is Maryland. He plays in Miami. Don't be confused by it, though. It often seems he can be in all places at once. Third down, 24. Stephen Clark in as a tight end for Texas. Texas running it with Hadnot, and they swarm him near the 10. This has been a fierce defensive effort by Miami to start this game in the opening quarter. Remember now, this series started on the 20. After the nice run by Hadnot there, he only gets it back out to the 10. Watch Hadnot. All right, there's a big hole, but look, he stops. Instead of making his cut, and Barrow just comes up. But now here's the strength of Hadnot. He carries six guys for another three yards. 28-inch thighs on that guy. Good play by Barrow of Miami. Now waits with a spiral punt, not very deep. Bouncing around favorably for Texas. And down it at the 46 of Miami. That's a 43-yard punt. The NFL playoffs begin this weekend. And on Sunday, we'll have the Saints against the Bears, 3.30 Eastern time. New Orleans traveling to Soldier Field. Gardere on headsets, I'm sure, communicating with Lynn Amity, the offensive coordinator for the Longhorns. Leonard Conley is the single back, three receivers to the left for Miami. Play action, bootleg, Carroll's open, and has it out of bounds at the Texas 36. Let's go down to our man John Dockery. Doc? You know, Jim, you've been talking about the 4-3 defense that Texas plays, middle linebacker, man-to-man -man defense, only rushing sometimes one linebacker, and I think that uh, McWilliams also feels that he was over-talking to his defensive back and linebackers, and I don't think they can get to a sophisticated offense like Miami, which should find pass blocking with only their front four. I think you're going to have to come with an extra linebacker, maybe two linebackers. McWilliams agrees with me. Hand off McGuire and a loss of a yard. A good defensive play by Shane Dronette, sophomore from Orange, Texas. Yeah, he's an All-American type guy, too, 6'6", 258. You know, I think Doc is absolutely right. Texas does not blitz as much as people think they do because they do get so much of a push that we talked about from the front four. They don't need the linebackers. But the Longhorns have to blitz more if they get in trouble, and right now they're in trouble. They're not getting enough pressure on Erickson. He's 6 for 9, 86 yards. You cannot allow him to have the hot hand. Spencer has come back in as a receiver. He's in a slot to the left, Conley in motion. Second down, 11 to go. Boy, Brian Jones has to maintain his composure. They're starting to wolf with them a little bit, talk to him, and he's jumping right in there. You don't want to throw any punches and be stupid and get thrown out of a football game. Watch number 60 now. He reads the play. Erickson goes down. Now watch Jones. Here's the push. Now he comes right back, throws the left hand there. On Sullivan, he can't do that. He's got to maintain his composure. He wants to stay in the game. The trip by Erickson cost him five yards, so it's third down, 16 to go. One on the down clock, and Erickson calls the time. With one second, on the down clock, Erickson looks across the line, wants to change the play, and calls the timeout. Two possessions for Miami, two field goals, but they'll face third and 16 when we return. Forty-eight-year-old David McWilliams, he grew up about 50 miles from here, south of the Cotton Bowl in Cleburne, Texas taking the Longhorns to their second bowl in his four years. His first season, they journeyed to Houston in the Blue Bonnet Bowl, won a game against Pittsburgh, that bowl game that no longer exists. Third 
down, 16 to go for Miami. Carroll shakes free. And out of bounds near the first. There is a flag in the pile. Boy, Carroll just broke the handcuffs of the sheriff that time. Richard had him all locked up, and he just broke it away. Miami has had a lot of success, Jim, running crossing patterns. When they do that, they're actually rubbing off the defender. What was that? The sheriff didn't put the handcuffs on him? We have a dead ball. After the play is over, clipping white team be four down and 16. You can watch him, Jim. He just didn't wrap up. And Carroll broke loose. You've got to wrap. You've got to control your wrist. Make sure the guy doesn't come and twist him down. Can't let a guy like Carroll break the tackle on you. Carroll's only 185 pounds. Carroll came up a yard short of the first, and then there was a clip on the back end of it. Right here. Mar Thomas. Right there, no Actually, question about it. Claude Jones, so they'll back him up 15, fourth and 16. Our first look at Paul Snyder. Not only was it a clip, it was late. <laughs> Willie Mac Garza standing back for Texas will let it bounce around into the end zone, a touchback. <laughs> down to the Doxter. Jim, if you're a football fan, you recognize this man, 1977 Heisman Trophy winner Earl Campbell. Earl, welcome. They got a pretty good running back here for Texas now. What about Butch Hadnot? They're comparing him to you. Well, I think Butch got a, a great, a lot of ability. I think someday he have a shot of winning the Heisman Trophy as well. I think he's an exceptional athlete. You know, to be a freshman and just come in and start and do what he's done, I think it's been great. Congratulations, we're going to go back after this play. Hold on a second. Had not as the single back, the man we're talking about. He gets the carry. And only a one-yard gain. Hit first by Daryl Williams. Maryland in there as well. And let's go back to Doc. What about this team, Earl? You must be proud of them returning to resurgence of, of Texas football the way it used to be. Oh, sure. I think Coach Mac Williams and his staff has done a great job. And I also think the players have. I mean, they came a long ways, and I think that speaks a lot for him and his staff. True Texas legend, and in part of the athletic staff here at Texas, an assistant to the athletic director. Thank you, Earl. Thank you, and hello to my friend Laquenda. All right, Earl, Earl okay. Campbell actually helped recruit had not. Second down and nine. Play action. Gardere goes down and fumbles. Maryland paused it. Recovered inside the 10 by Miami. Sack. Now Watch give this. him a second. Watch this, Jim. Again, it's Russell Maryland, the Outland Trophy winner. Watch him break. They try to set a double team. One guy runs out, and he just comes through and strips him. He's big. He's strong. Shunned the NFL last year. Wanted to stay. Wasn't heavily recruited out of high school. Came into Miami over 300 pounds. He worked. Nobody really gave him a chance. And all of a sudden, he's down to 270, and he turns into an All-American. That's a fantastic play. His third big play of this ball game. Tim, there's a penalty after the recovery by Maurice Crum of Miami. They're penalizing Miami for excessive celebration. Dancing in the end zone, 15 yard penalty on the foot of the right. That'll drive Erickson nuts. We've seen a personal foul, a clipping, and two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties against Miami in the first quarter. Dennis Erickson says one of the things he is most proud about is that this team has changed. It doesn't taunt anymore. Well, some talking and celebrating costing him here. It's first and goal from the 23. Carroll out of bounds near the 15. Todd Ringo bumped him out. There's another flag down as some, some pushing going on on the field. Between Searcy and Dronette of Texas. It's 
See, emotions get in the way of concentration, and right now both teams have to maintain that composure. It's costing Miami. If this is against the Hurricanes, look out. First of foul, orange team be an automatic first down. That is a huge benefit for Miami because they had a first and goal to go situation all the way back starting from the 23. Now they'll get the first down. Let's see where they spot it. Well, see, they were hit first. Now Texas is hit hurt. They both have to maintain their composure. It'll be first and 10 from the 12. Boy, Miami is running some serious rub-offs, and that is legal. They aren't even making contact, but they're running crossing patterns and trying to take the defensive back who's man for man off of the receiver. First and 10 for Miami. Intended for Connolly and Brian Jones put a major hit on him. LC is back. He was suspended for two games. Now Connolly's only 170 pounds and he's being covered by a linebacker, Jones, who's 238. But somehow Jones runs with him and separates him from the football. Wearing the number 60 at Texas and that is something special if you're a Longhorn linebacker started of course the legend did of that number with Tommy Novus second down 10 Alex Johnson has come in for Miami Erickson's pass caught by Carroll nice move touchdown Miami the score now 12 nothing Miami's going to go for two two field goals and a touchdown now looking for a two 11 seconds left in the first quarter a 12 yard strike Erickson to Carroll who made the swift move very similar to one we saw yesterday by Courtney Hawkins of Michigan State for a touchdown in the in the Hancock Bowl Miami has burned its second timeout leaving them with one here in the opening half. Watch the third receiver here from the bottom of the screen. He's got the most field to work with, so he is extremely dangerous. Locked on a safety. Now watch his moves. One to the inside, back out again. Makes the catch and then spin move and pirouettes into the end zone. He was working on Todd Ringo, number 43. It is a high risk, high reward defense. Anytime you're locked on one-on-one, -on -one, man for man, you don't have help. So the safety this time, which is Ringo, is all by himself out here. And when Carroll spin moves to the inside, the help, the pursuit that they were su supposed to get from Lance Gunn, 16 there, never came. Touchdown, Miami. Let's go back down to Doc. You know, it's an interesting dynamic along the sidelines here on the Miami side. The officials have been over talking to the coaches, telling the Miami players to get back. And Dennis Erickson, after chatting with him for a few minutes, finally said, hey, forget about it. Drop dead. We're going to win anyhow. A sense that Miami feels maybe everybody here is against them. They're going to use that for their own benefit. And they are arrogant about what they can do here this afternoon in the Cotton Bowl. So Miami rebelling. And throw out Miami nice for the present time. Going for two. <laughs> Shannon Crowell has come in along with Alex Johnson in the backfield. Erickson rolling. Intercepted. No. Dropped by Barry, but it doesn't matter. Shane Tronnett was putting pressure on Erickson, and Mark Barry with the coverage and near interception. So it stays Miami 12, Texas nothing. 
Craig Erickson, the MVP last year in their New Year's Day game in the Sugar Bowl. He threw for three touchdowns against Alabama and ended the week not only with a championship ring, but a picture of himself on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Coming back with another New Year's Day hot start. Miami with 11 regular season games. This now their 12th game of the season. They have scored first in all 12 of their games this season. But Texas has been unflappable. They have come from behind to win on seven occasions. Seven of their 10 wins, Texas came from behind to win it. That's why they're so relaxed right now. They're used to being in this situation. Kick bouncing over the head of Samuels, who returned to the kick return team. And he downs it for a touchback. The Cotton Bowl, this storied stadium, uh, surrounded by the Texas State Fairgrounds. Chilly weather, but clear skies. All you have to do is think back to Notre Dame and Houston in 1979, and you're thankful for any kind of day better than that. Samuels running for a one-yard game. Michael Barrow making the tackle to close the first quarter. A quarter where we saw Miami living in the Texas end of the field. So at the end of the first quarter, it's Miami 12, Texas nothing. We'll return to the Cotton Bowl after this message and the word from your local station. The Cotton Bowl where Miami is leading Texas by the score of 12 nothing and just before we get going here for the second quarter let's bring you up to date on some scores from other bowl games around the country we begin out at the citrus bowl where georgia tech is leading nebraska out at the hall of fame bowl another acc team clemson on top of illinois and in the gator bowl it's michigan over ole miss by the score of 35 to 3 and now let's send it back upstairs to jim nance Thank you, Andrea. All decisive leads at this point on New Year's Day. We start the second quarter, and Texas facing second and nine from its 21. Samuels and Hadnot split behind Gardair. Williams chasing him. Great escapability by Gardair. But still goes down at the 17 for a loss. There is a flag back near the 10. And it's probably going to be on the two All-Americans, Stan Thomas, the tackle, working against Russell Maryland. Jim Gardere now is 0 for 1 and has been sacked three times. It is going to be against Thomas. Probably refuse Holding. it. Offensive team, penalty is declined. Come on, Dwayne! Come on, Chuck! Talking to the left side of that line, Dwayne Miller and Chuck Johnson. That is now the fourth sack by the Miami defense. Third and 14 for Texas. Make it five. I'll tell you, Timmy, you come from near the Baltimore area, and you're very familiar with Maryland crab cakes. This is what you call a Maryland pancake. Inside or, of the 10, Gardair is jolted. Or if you want to get more graphic, this is a butt buster right here. Gardair is going to feel that one for a while, not only the hit, but then when he takes him to the ground, just pile drives him. How about this? Rushing yards now for... Texas minus four, passing zero. Waits out of the end zone. Low kick, bouncing at midfield. Williams picks it up and stumbles to the 39. 52-yard punt, five-yard return. What a first half by Russell Maryland. 
He's had three sacks in the first half and caused a fumble. Summarize the game total offense. Texas now in negative figures. Miami's defense totaling five sacks. The touchdown, a pass to Wesley Carroll. And there's one more statistic that's not on there. Texas has already had a turnover. Oh, there's a big hit. Oscar Giles knocking down Steve McGuire in the backfield. Good play by the very personable Oscar Giles. Watch number 95 near the top of the screen. Just blows by his block right there. And Sullivan's not going to be proud of that one. He made, he made Palacios proud of that one. But the thing about Oscar Giles is he's seeing Maryland make all the plays. Now he wants to get some because he was an outlet trophy candidate that was beaten out by Maryland who won it. Second and 12. Here he comes again. Wide open was Carroll. He was wide open at the 35 but was overthrown. Jim Stanley Richard right there, number 18, told us he was going to have the best game of his career. He's the leader of this defensive secondary, but he is beaten badly here by his own man. Now, you could see him collide as they crossed. They've been running the crossing patterns. They've been trying to put a man in the face of the safety, which gets his attention, and then they're rubbing off the other guy. They're actually bumping into each other. They're running defensive backs into each other. Third down, 12 to go for Miami. Trips to the right. Played intended for Spencer. The fifth straight third and more than ten that Miami has had to go against. They've been in third and long all afternoon. Paul Snyder averages only 36 yards a punt. Samuels back for the return. Fair catch call made by Samuels at the Texas 36. 28 yards on the punt. There is another flag on the field. Almost every play at the end of it has a couple of guys wolfing at each other, talking to each other, pushing and shoving. Five yards, violation of the two-yard buffer zone, five-yard penalty. And will push the football forward to the 41. Texas at last gets good starting field position with 12 minutes, 44 seconds to go in the second quarter. Texas's storybook season started with the seniors, and the man who really ignited the charge was backup tight end Stephen Clark. He explains. We just decided that after, you know, five years of sitting here watching senior class after senior class leave without victories, leave on a losing note, that it just kind of got tiring. We knew that we had the talent here. I knew we had the talent here, and I just decided that, you know, someone had to step forward and make that commitment. And I just, for some reason, decided that, you know, yeah, I should do it. Well, he's a, Jim, he's a great student, and last year when he was hurt, he sat in the stands during the entire season. He said he was listening to fans, even professors, fellow classmates, and they were belittling the team and the way they played. He became the mediator. He went into coach. He's the guy in charge of getting them all up for 6 o'clock workouts during the spring and fall. Their best starting position by 21 yards. And the first completion by Gardner. It goes to Samuels out to the 48-yard line. been a mix up in time the game started at 12 30 I think Texas just thought it started a couple minutes ago second down for the horns call it three had not 
Pollard by Darren Smith. Short of the first by about a yard. Darren Smith on his socks has the initials RS. And for his father, who was killed 18 years ago, he was a member of the Police Benevolence Society. And volunteering at a neighborhood festival, a motorist came by and shot him. Unexplainable. He remembers his father every game with his initials on his uniform. Third down play. First down for Texas. Butch had not on the carry, and the Longhorns have their very first first down of the game with 11 minutes to go in the first half. Another flag down, too. Dead ball. After play's over. Personal foul. Defensive team. That'll put the football, Tim, down to the 33-yard line. Now three personal fouls and two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties against Miami. Well, this one went against Anthony Hamlet. He locked up with Stan Thomas, drove him all the way up near midfield, and Thomas looked at the official and said, you know, this has got to stop, and they threw the flag. Keith Cash split wide to the right. And the officials from the Southeastern Conference Look to the sidelines. The chains were not properly set. Tech still with a two touchdown advantage. Nebraska on the board. Gardere came out of Lee High School in Houston. Third all time in the state of Texas in passing yardage. makes a great cutback. The freshman here, watch him now once he breaks through. Here's the cutback. We told you run straight ahead until you find the cutback lanes against an over-aggressive, over-pursuing defense. Had not does that, sets up his block, and makes a gain of 14 out of it. Now he carries 37 yards. Texas showing some fight. First down from the 19, lined up in the eye. Handoff, Samuels. at the 11 by Crum and Curry. Texas has four backs that average over four and a half yards per carry, so they spread the wealth. But they are just now starting to get it in gear. Gardere has to hit some more passes to open up the running lanes even more. Second down for Texas, second and three. Flag is down. Had not carries near the 10. Wrapped up by Michael Barrow. Offside penalty against Miami. That'll give Texas a first and goal to go. Jim, it'll also move them inside the 10-yard line. And once you get inside the 10, here's what you look for. Number 19, Kerry Cash. They like to go to him with the alley-oop play. They'll try to lock him on a shorter defensive back, and they'll use his 6'4 height on the alley-oop. First and goal from the seven. Crowd on its feet. The pitch to Samuel, so the flag on the field. Samuels is belted near the five by Darrell Williams and Charles Farm. And another flag comes in late. And again, this one hits right between the five and the one on Stan Thomas of Texas.
flag day in Dallas. We thought the dominant color on the field was orange, but it's yellow. In fact, you know what happens too when you throw this many flags, have this many penalties, it takes both teams out of a rhythm. We've got an offsetting foul. Offside defense, holding, offense, first down. Replay of the down, first and goal from the seventh. if they go to their money player cash if I'm on defense I'm thinking cash right now for the payoff hat knocks a lot of movement but no gain Maurice crumb came in on him <laughs> had not had some uh, cousins that starred in the Southwest Conference ahead of him Bubba Bean from Texas A&M he was a good running back for the Aggies, and James had not from Texas Tech, who had an outstanding career. Score is a loss of a yard. Second and goal for Texas from the eight. Shane Curry with sack number six. Boy, and I'm going to tell you something. Keith Cash was wide open in the end zone. Nobody within 12 yards of him. this now the backside pressure of course takes Gardere out of the play but I want you to watch the left hand of your screen way back in the end zone by himself it was cash see everybody locked on carry cash number 19 Keith cash was behind him by 12 yards wide open Texas third and goal to go from the 12 Gardere almost intercepted by Bailey who likely would have run it back 97 yards for a touchdown. This is a defensive back's dream. Pick it off at the one and take it the distance. There's nobody else there. Nobody's going to catch him. And he just dropped it, hit off his chest plate. Bailey with some big plays. Michael Pollock in to attempt a field goal. And Try to get Texas on the board. 29-yard attempt. Kick is good. After first and goal with the seventh, the Horns settle for a field goal to move within nine. Back to the Cotton Bowl. Texas finally gets on the ball on the goal on the scoreboard. That is with a kick by Michael Pollard. And you've heard the expression: uh, success is 99% uh, uh, perspiration, 1% inspiration. Well, Michael Pollard is exactly that. Take a look at this. Didn't play most of his career. Now he has a record: 21 field goals for the University of Texas this season. So sometimes sticking with it does pay off, as in the case of Michael Pollard. Jim. You know, Doc, when uh, the rest of his teammates were in spring ball, he was over at American University in Vienna studying abroad. No idea that he would come on and be the All-Southwest Conference kicker and set the Texas record for field goals in a season. A walk-on. Pollock's kick bounces to Williams at the 8. Williams to the 20. Williams to the 30. Across the 40. And to the 47 for Kevin Williams, a freshman from right here in Dallas, playing for the Hurricanes. Next Saturday on CBS Sports, basketball action. Women's NCAA doubleheader from Iowa City. Big Ten versus SEC. Purdue and Auburn in game one, followed by Georgia and Iowa. Well, Joe Champies, Auburn Lady Tigers seem to be in the hunt every single year in that final four. Again, he's ranked number three. Alex Johnson is the single back for Miami. Here comes Texas. And that pass was thrown at Darren Handy, the center. And there are flags down. 
obviously handy not an eligible receiver Bo Robinson intentional it. grounding no eligible receiver in the area five yard penalty ball to down <laughs> you're right you started to say Bo Robinson because it was a late flag I don't think the official realized what was happening until Robinson explained to him said hey there's not a receiver around the only guy there is Darren Handy watch this little play action and there's nobody on that side except Texas folks so Erickson just unloads it in the direction of 66 he can't catch the ball he's not eligible and then Robinson right away becomes the official and says he can't do that should be a flag and they dropped it it's a loss of 17 back him up from where he threw it second down 27 to go out of the backfield to Johnson spinning around to the 32 Anthony curl on the tackle Miami's over 100 yards now we played a quarter and a half over 100 yards in penalties and that sets a cotton bowl record for most penalty yards by a team 55th year of this bowl and they've broken the record in a quarter and a half also broke the time record you're right they did it so fast <laughs> third down 23 to go Erickson to Carroll and he falls short of the first slipped at the Texas 46 about two yards shy that plays amazing to me for two reasons number one there were no flags thrown number two it's the sixth straight time they've had to go 10 yards or more to get a first they needed 22 and didn't get it Samuels on the return for Texas, standing at the 10, waiting for Paul Snyder's punt. He'll let it go into the end zone, a touchback. 46-yard punt, and the Horns will begin from their 20. Just under six minutes to go in the first half. Miami in front. The 1964 Cotton Bowl had a national championship riding on it. Texas number one against number two Navy. Longhorn quarterback Duke Carlisle scrambled and passed the Longhorns to victory. Through two touchdown passes to Phil Harris. 58 and 63 yards. David McWilliams, the Longhorn coach, was the co-captain of that Texas team. Late in the game, Navy quarterback Roger Staubach got his team on the board. But it was too late as Texas won its first national championship, 28 to 6. It was 1964. Welcome to 1991. Jim Nance along with Tim Brandt, John Dockery on the sidelines, and our friends from the studio, Andrea Joyce and Mike Francesa, with us as well. And coming up at halftime, they'll have a look back at George Allen. First down for Texas. Cash, Keith Cash, his first catch, and a gain of about eight. Going down now, baby, going down, score. They do seem to have the confidence now mounting after a sluggish start. Here's the guy that's been hurting him right here, Russell Maryland. But watch as he comes up, they're going to use more than one guy on him. They say, hey, we've got to stop 67 right now, so they double team him, hold him out. Now, Sonny Lubbock, Miami's defensive coordinator, felt strongly that the Hurricanes could slow Texas running game. But what concerned him was the pass. Not that Gardere's a great passer, but the pass has hurt Miami all year. Second down for Texas. Walker dropped for a loss by Michael Barrow. And Darren Smith will set up third and six. Defensive speed, we've talked about it several times in the ball game. There is no way that Texas can outrun Miami's defense sideline to sideline. That's what they're trying to do here with Walker, and it's just not going to happen. The Miami linebackers can outrun the Texas backs. Smith, Barrow, and Crum are all extremely quick for linebackers. Third down five for Texas. Gardere with time this time, but he's picked off by Bailey at the 30. Bailey to the 25 and down at the 20. Tackled by Stephen Clark. Oh. 
Talk about a guy that's had a terrific first half. Bailey made the hit on the opening kickoff and took Samuels out of the game. Gets a break here, but it's the old tip drill. The pressure again, I think Gardere throws it quicker than he really wants to. He sees the pressure. Now here's the tip, and here comes Bailey just playing free back there. Picks it off and then just takes it and looks for some blocking. But he's having a marvelous first half. Robert Bailey out of Miami, Florida. Five tackles and an interception from the 21. With pressure, Erickson is sacked this time by Brian Jones. UCLA transfer, Brian Jones, coming in on Erickson, much like he did the entire game against David Klingler and that tremendous Texas blowout of Houston. Look at the blitz, Jim. They weren't getting enough push out of their front four. They bring Brian Jones, 60, top of your screen. As soon as the ball was snapped, he came running, came free on the right side. They just outnumbered the Miami players on that side, and he makes the sack. He said that Erickson reminds him of Klingler, right down to the jersey number. Second down, Erickson looking in zone for Carroll. Touchdown, Miami. <laughs> out for the extra point and as always it's good he's the all-time record holder in college football for consecutive point afters Boy, he's what an 142 straight what an outstanding read this time by Erickson not that he sees Carroll with one-on-one -on -one coverage out there but that he picked up the blitz Texas came right back with the same play only this time from the left side they brought Brian Jones the linebacker again they picked it up they read it they went to the quick dump. They went down deep to Carroll, and there he is, wide open. No shot for the safety, the free safety, Stanley Richard, to get over and help the corner. Carroll now has both of Miami's touchdowns. Seven receptions, over 100 yards in the first half. High risk, high reward. You bring Jones one time to the right, it works. You bring him to the left time. Once burnt. Twice learned, went right to it, read it, picked it up, fired, touchdown. Nineteen to three, Miami. Where does kick travels to Samuels at the seven? Good run back across the thirty to the thirty-five. A run back of 27 yards. Jason Marucci on the special team's tackle. Watch this right here. This is the man. He's got all this field to work with, and he's going to try to get out to the post, or the flag, rather. Safety's late coming over. Now, you can see at the right of your screen already the safety's behind, has no shot, and Carroll's already beaten his man. Richard, the safety, is already 15 yards away from him, and Carroll makes the catch across the line. It's too late. to Gardere, but they may have grabbed him by the face mask. Shane Curry. As the flags are everywhere on the field. And it's going against Miami. Face mask. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. 15 yards. First down. Brings the football to midfield. I think Texas is a little bit overwhelmed right here. I mean, this has been total domination. First down for the Horns from the 50. Three receivers to the left. Another infraction. See this guy here, Rusty Medeiros. Medeiros in a game against Texas Tech 
had five and a half sacks in one game. Russell Merrill and his teammates having that same kind of contest today. Let's go back down to John Dockery. You know, it's amazing, Jim, they're doing it to Texas on defense without possibly their best linebacker. You see him suited up behind me. Number one, Jesse Armstead. He was hurt a month and a half ago against Florida State. He is a Dallas native. He's in uniform because he hopes to maybe get into the game at the end of the game. Now back to you, Jim. Off the option this time. They run the option with Gardere and a gain of 13 yards. Got a good block from Dwayne Miller. Brings the football to the 43 of Miami. Good change up by Texas. They had been going straight ahead with the run and passing when they could. Haven't had much success with either. So this time they come down, they go vertical, they run the option and have a big play out of it. Walker left, Cash in a slot left, second and three for Texas. Had not, first down for the Longhorns to the 37. Four penalties on the field. Get off the field, he says. Dead ball, personal foul. After play is over, defensive team, first foul. I tell you what, Miami has wanted to change its image all season long. They have destroyed it in one half of football. down for Texas. Had not met head on at the 18 by Hurley Brown. Here's a guy coming back from injury, Tim. Hurley Brown had knee surgery and missed four games. He's been the defensive leader up to that point, but really worked hard to get back into the lineup. Second down and seven. Gardere on the run, hits his target, Samuels. Samuels has a first and goal to go with the nine. Outstanding rhythmic throw by Gardere that time. Three steps, get it out into the flat right now. Make your decision, get it there, get it to Samuels, let him run with it. Two minutes left in the second quarter. First time all afternoon that Gardere has thrown in rhythm. He sends the tight end out wide to the right. Carry Cash. They like to get into the jump ball situation with him. They're looking for it. There he is. No jump ball, but a bullet pass to the five and down to the three. They shift the tight end. Send him as a receiver. And there's Kerry Cash. He holds the Longhorns record for receiving for tight ends. They try to isolate him all the time on the linebacker. Great size, tremendous hands, tough body, soft hands. He's the key to Texas. But right now, the Longhorns just have to bang this thing in. Second down, goal to go from the three. Samuels. Nothing at all. Shane Curry on that line with the rest of Miami. Stacked them up. Clock is running now. 45 seconds left in the second quarter. boost six points would be on this play for Texas right before the half third and goal play action incomplete Darren Smith knocked it away from Kerry Cash boy that was solid coverage too he may have gotten away with the left hand on the back but he made some great coverage watch this now just keep an eye on 45 to the right of your screen, all the way across. Here's the left hand, the left hand. Now here comes the left hand again, pushing him, but the right hand reaches in front and knocks it away. 
Hurley Brown and Robert Bailey putting on the pressure. There's Bailey knocking Gardere to the turf. Texas calls a timeout with 22 seconds left. Fourth and goal from the three. Offense still on the field. Texas is going to go for it on fourth and goal from the three on final 22 seconds of the first half. Same distance you would go for a two-point attempt. And this year, Texas was two of three on two-point conversion tries. You like them going for it here, Tim? I do. I think they're fun. The safe, everybody would say, well, the safe thing is get the points and go into the locker room with some momentum knowing that you just scored. I think down 19 to 3, and if they don't score here, I think the deficit could be too much for this young Texas team to catch up because thus far it has just been Miami dominating. They need this badly to change not only the momentum, but also to pull within striking distance of the Hurricanes. I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd load up right behind Boyd and Thomas, and then I'd look for Cash in the corner. Cash is to the right. Carry Cash. Keep Cash to the left. Fourth there he goal. is. There he is. Cash out of bounds when he made the catch. And he's knocked out again by Bailey. Well, I'm telling you, Bailey showed up today with bad intentions, and that's good. Take another look. Now keep in mind, it's a judgment call by the official if he thinks he would have come back down inside. Bailey's already pushing him. I don't know. You talk about a judgment call, but I think he probably would have come down out of bounds. That was the official's decision. He said Bailey had nothing to do with it, and they called him out. No good. Eighteen seconds left now. Connolly's in the backfield. Run it out here before the half. I wonder if Erickson knew how close he was to that goal line. He took a step back, almost went into the end zone. I was, I was thinking the same thing. Don't want to down it for a safety. <laughs> Miami 19 to three at the half. CBS Sports coverage of the Mobile Cotton Bowl continues after this message in a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the 55th Mobile Cotton Bowl Classic is sponsored by Hyundai. The full line of quality cars from Hyundai. Yes, Hyundai. Magnavox, smart choices for smart people. Magnavox, smart, very smart. And by Alamo. There are over 4 million miles of roads in Alamo territory, and with Alamo, all those miles are free. Contest to Timmy the numbers. Well, you look at this, it's been domination by the Hurricanes. 162 yards to just 52 by Texas. One of the big things in here, the turnovers for Texas. Two turnovers, they've scored both times. Miami has, and that's been a major difference as well. All right, just a moment ago, our John Dockery working the sidelines had a visit with David McWilliams of Texas. Coach, what do you do to get back in the game? Do you blitz more on defense? You know, I think we've done a pretty good job defensively there at the last, in the second quarter. We just not been, uh, hadn't been able to block their line, you know, to get time for Gardner to throw the football. So I think we've got to do a better job on offense, controlling that line of scrimmage and get some offense going. We've had two big turnovers that have given them two touchdowns. Thank you, Coach. Okay. Miami will, in fact, get the football to start the third quarter. Jim, I can tell you he's exactly right, McWilliams is, when he says we haven't been able to block him. You take Maryland has four sacks. They haven't even slowed him down yet. Michael Pollock's field goal, the only points for Texas thus far. 
Kevin Williams and Daryl Spencer of Miami await at the five yard line for the kick from Pollock. Kevin Williams, freshman from Dallas, Texas, across the 20, across the 30, across the 40, in near midfield, finally brought down by Todd Ringo. And Ringo was all that was left for the Longhorn defense on that kick coverage. Jim, at halftime, they were talking about the behavior of the Miami players being appalling. I tell you, it's stupid, but it's not appalling. They're playing with a lot of emotion. The penalties are unnecessary. But a lot of times when football players play with emotion, they're going to get into a few tangles, have a few words, and get a couple of late hits in. Horace Copeland in as a receiver wide to the left. He's a speedster, one-on-one -on -one coverage for him. Here comes a blitz on Erickson, and he goes down for a three-yard loss. Tommy Jeter, James Patton. Tech by 10 in the third. Good day for the Atlantic Coast Conference. Georgia Tech, of course, believes firmly that it should win the national championship, although it's not Bobby Ross's style to get out in politics. Second down for Miami, second and 13. Intended for Williams, cutting across the middle. You know, following up that Georgia Tech and Bobby Ross situation, Bobby Ross is not the kind of guy out of politics, but I find it humorous that Lou Holtz all year said, hey, we're not number one, we shouldn't be number one, told us here on the air after they had won a game that, hey, we're not number one, we're overrated as soon as the season ends, and now he's headed to the Orange Bowl. He says, hey, we're the best team in the nation. We deserve the national championship. Third down, 13 for Miami. Shane Dronette, two sacks on this series for the Longhorn defense. That's right. If Jeter didn't get him, Dronette would have. If Dronette hadn't, Jones would have. All of them were there. The Sheriff came late, but this is a whole different defense than we saw in the first half. Snyder to punt. With pressure, gets it away. Takes Samuels back to the 20. Unable to get away from that first wave Marucci on the tackle and there's the first flag of the second half didn't take long this one I believe will go against Texas during the run back clipping receiving team be first and ten you know the officials don't want to throw flags really shouldn't throw flags takes both teams out of the rhythm but if they feel a game is getting out of control they they'll throw them and they'll throw them at the least most minimal most outrageous penalties you can find just to keep both teams on a leash and I think that's what they're doing here first down play for Texas from its nine Samuels driven down from the linebacker Michael Barrow Samuels, uh, for two years, was a backup to Eric Metcalf for Texas. He's a senior from San Antonio. They've got quite a number of players from San Antonio, including the Cash Twins and Johnny Walker. Now, well, Samuels can do so much for this club. He's the return guy, runner, fine receiver, anything type guy. Second down, six. Guard there with Maryland after him. He gets away. He's got the first down, and Charles Farms takes him out at the 28. Hey, I'd go over right now, and I'd shake Chris Samuels' hand. Gardair got around the corner because number 23, right there in the middle of your screen, threw an outstanding block out by the hash marks. Watch this now. 
Gardere with the play action tries to roll right but runs right into the outside contained pressure. So now he can feel Maryland coming quickly from behind. So he gets outside. Look at Samuel's block. That's the one that gets him the first down. First down from the 28. On the delay, the give to Hadnot. And only a gain of about two. John Dockery, you were uh, hanging out near the locker rooms. What did uh, Dennis Erickson say to his team at the half? You know, Jim, the conversation centered around keeping their composure, not doing anything stupid. Yes, he wants to, to keep up their intensity level, but he said, hey, don't make stupid mistakes. Don't get stupid penalties. And by all means, keep your composure and keep it going. Keep after them. So he is concerned, as we've been talking about all game, about his team getting an awful lot of penalties. He should be concerned, but you don't want to pull those reins too much. Second down, nine. Gardere intercepted. Darren Smith to the 10. He'll high step it in for the Hurricane touchdown. Five to three. That's the second interception of Gardair. Run back for a touchdown by Darren Smith. The second one is. And Huerta converts the extra point. It's the young man we told you. He carries the initials of his father, who was killed some 18 years ago on his uniform, in his memory, stepping in front of Cash, Keith Cash and running it back 35 yards for a Miami touchdown. It's been a game so far the Longhorns would like to forget. The 55th annual Mobile Cotton Bowl Classic from Dallas and the Goodyear Blimp America overhead from Houston, Texas, Piloted today by Larry Chambers of Spring, Texas. Blimp made its first appearance at a sporting event at the Orange Bowl 31 years ago today. Huerta kicks it for Miami with a 26-3 lead. Walker from the six. Ryan McNeil on the tackle at the 21, and downstairs we go to John Dockery. Uh, thank you, Jim. I'm with Alan E. Murray, the chairman, president, and CEO of Mobile Corporation. And, uh, Mr. Murray, we know that corporate sponsorships works for, for the Cotton Bowl. Does it work for Mobile as well? Oh, absolutely, John. It's great. And, of course, we have a great allegiance with this whole state, town, the conference, and what have you. It's going to get bigger and better. I think it's going to be better next year. And next you want to give a message to somebody? Yeah, well, next year it's going to be a better bowl because we're going to have all the young men and women in the Middle East back successfully. Well, that's a nice thought. Thank you, and a happy new year to you. Happy Jim? Year, Jim. Yeah, let's hope so. First down, Texas, and had not. Written down on the play by Michael Barrow. Jim, the worst thing an announcer can do is say the game is over when there's still so much time left, just sets himself up for failure when a team comes roaring back. But unless there is a dramatic change in Texas, this game is over because right now they aren't playing well enough to win. Second down, six to go. There's a good run. Samuels picks up the first for the Longhorns at the 33. Jeff Boyd gave him a block. Texas has tried everything. They, they've gone for the balance of the run, the pass. Gardere has not been successful. And it's not all Gardere's fault. He's just not getting any time. They have not been able to stop the Miami rush. They've got to. The offensive line has to improve. On first down, off the option, they go to Hadnot on the pitch. 
Hedma to the outside. In the Miami territory and out of bounds near the 40. It's a great call. Gardner has been sacked six times. They haven't been able to run straight. So now they take him down on the option him on the corner. Watch the block by 23 Samuels again. Here comes Hadnot. Now the left of your screen, 23 Samuels is going to come in. Just hold him up and let Hadnot stiff arm him off balance and turns it up on the outside corner. 26 yards, Timmy. And he now has 76 for the game. Samuels. Robert Bailey by the ankle. You know what's amazing to me? We sat, we talked to the Miami coaches yesterday, and Sonny Lubick, Tommy Tuberville, told us both that Robert Bailey was going to play a great game today. They said, just watch 23. Bailey's going to play a sensational game. Last thing they said to us, and he was outstanding. He tackled uh, number 23, Chris Samuels of Texas on that play after a four-yard game. Now second and six. Gardere keeps for a one-yard pickup. Curry in Maryland. Robert Bailey is senior from Miami. How about his fall semester schedule? He took physics, organic chemistry, conversational Spanish, ancient philosophy, and the philosophy of Kant. Yeah, he's one of those guys that can split the atoms and then come out and play with the big guys on the football field. He wants to go to med school after graduating this spring. Third down, Gardner keeping near the first. No, oh, he's got the first easily. 27-yard line. Anthony Hamlet hit him first. Michael Barrow helped out. Nine-yard gain by Gardner. Well, we said there had to be a dramatic change, so they've done that. They've shaken it up. They've gone to the option. Now they've got Miami a little bit on their heels. They've run straight ahead. They've optioned. They've used the pass, all three. Now they've given an alternative more for Miami defensive players to think about. Walker and Cash to the left. Samuels on a wing to the left. Had not in the backfield. First down, looking to pass. Gardere toward the end zone, out of bounds for Walker. It's been a silent day thus far for Johnny Walker, Tim. Walker's also a, a baseball player. Played for Texas. Signed a six-figure contract with the Braves to Johnny Walker. And he played in, in the minor leagues this past summer. Drives a Mercedes-Benz as a reward for the money that he got to, to sign in baseball. Perfectly legal. All-time single season record at Texas last year 55 catches and he went to high school at San Antonio Holmes with the Cash Twins they've been together playing football for eight years closing it out today now had not makes the catch but it's a loss on the play Hurley Brown came up to make the play for Miami along with Michael Barrow you know Miami has a philosophy that has been very successful they take high school linebackers and make them defensive linemen and they forget about recruiting tall, muscle-bound guys to play linebacker instead to get strong, fast guys who love to run the field and hit. Speed is the key. And Barrow is one of those linebackers that can run as fast as any back on the field. Look at that. Third down and 13 for Texas. Sack time for Mark Caesar. Sack number seven. He's a sophomore from Newark, New Jersey, and he adds to the sack total. The proud and the mighty, it says. 54-yard field goal attempt for Michael Pollock. He had one of 56 yards this year, successful against Baylor. Barefooted kick will not get there. Well short of the mark. And we're midway through the third quarter.
Hurricane winds have been swirling from the start. 1970, Era Parsegan brought the ninth-ranked Fighting Irish into the Cotton Bowl against number one Texas. Daryl Royal and the Longhorns went against Joe Theismann, who combined for almost 300 yards total offense, including this touchdown pass. That put Notre Dame ahead, 17-14, late in the fourth quarter. But back came the Horns, and Billy Dale's one-yard touchdown gave Texas the national championship. They had a rematch in 1971. Texas, again, ranked number one. Notre Dame, ranked sixth. Arrow walked the field again with Darrell. Joe Theismann had another big day, throwing for a touchdown and running for two more scores. Neither team scored in the second half as Notre Dame handed Texas its first loss in 31 games. Notre Dame winning 24-11. From the 38, Miami, first down, McGuire. Driving it down to the 46 of the Longhorns. 17 yards for Steve McGuire, Miami's number one rusher. Set a freshman rushing mark last year for Miami. Increased his totals this year. Where's the number 30 once worn by Alonzo Highsmith? Similar running style, and now Alonzo plays in this same town of Dallas for the Cowboys. Wire wrestled down by Shane Dranette. Watch this, here comes Jeanette in here, number 81. He's 6'6", 258, just watch the way his feet move though, he's quick. Boy, that's a nice move, just a little shutter shift and move and shift and move and he got it. Second and 12, a loss of two after Dronette's play. Going downfield for Thrill Hill at the 20, to the 10, touchdown Miami. Come on back, Randall. Come on back. <laughs> well, we talked about the older, more experienced Miami team. This borders on child abuse. Look at Thrill Hill back there. Well, I'll tell you something about him. Speed is a thrill for Hill. He runs a 4-3-40. Says his pass routes are a different expression of his talent. Here's a guy that dreams about running with cheetahs and being pulled over by a police car for speeding. He talks openly about dreams like that. Loves to run, loves to speed. Hill's first catch. And it goes for a touchdown. Safety's late coming over. You see him in the screen running out there to the left. It's just a go pattern. Hey, not only is he fast, he holds all of Miami's records for strength among the receivers. Tough body, soft hands. We told you that. Randall Hill closes his career at Miami today. He'll be playing in the Senior Bowl in a couple of weeks. Reminded us of Bo Jackson one time for the Raiders running all the way up the ramp, continuing on, taking that celebration to the ramp. You know, he had taken a lot of heat earlier in the year because the coaches didn't like the celebration he had on the field, exploiting dances, that type of thing. So this time he ran right up into the tunnel and did the dance in the tunnel. Had a long talk with him the other day. He was very concerned about the way the pros thought about him and his attitude. Kick comes to the four-yard line, Samuels. Across the 20, across the 30, and out of bounds. Next Sunday, or this coming up on Sunday, we'll have wild card action. The New Orleans Saints getting into the playoffs last night with the victory over the Rams. Be facing the Chicago Bears. Wild card action. Start 
3.30 Eastern time here on CBS Sports. A little bit ironic, isn't it, that the Saints knocked the Cowboys out with that win last night, and it was Walsh who left Dallas to go to play with New Orleans and came up with a big play to set up the final field goal. I'm sure Steve is watching uh, this game. He used to room with Craig Erickson. Erickson will be the next to join the uh, Miami Millionaire Club as Bailey, who has had a big afternoon, gets help off the field. Talking about that Miami Millionaire Club. You add them up. Kelly, Kozar, Vinny, Testaverde, and Steve Walsh. They have contracts totaling $48 million. Craig Erickson with three touchdown passes today. And he'll be the next one to join them on Sundays. 12 for 20, 210 yards. You know, that offense got started. John Elway's dad, Jack, who ran the beer, got all of his running backs hurt except one, so he put a wide receiver in the game. Another motion man, and bingo, the one-back motion set from the beer. Herbert James has replaced Bailey at the corner. First down for Texas. Looking for his receiver, Cash, and the catch near the 40-yard line. I haven't seen a defense hit harder than this all year long. That's pretty indicative. Not only has Gardair not had time, but his receivers are running around with their head on a swivel, seeing where the next hit is coming from. Second down, five to go. Had not. First thing for the first near midfield. Chuck Johnson with a good block. Seven seniors start on offense for Texas. What kind of offense do you think they'll have next year, losing the bulk of it to graduation? Well, they do, but I, I tell you, they've got a lot of people coming in at a lot of different positions that are playing extremely well. I think what's going to happen is you're going to see Texas go out and recruit 10 or 12 linemen because that's where they're hurt the most. But behind, besides that, they're loaded at the skilled spots, the skilled positions. First down play, rolling and throwing. Gardere hits Samuels for a gain of about seven. <laughs> Mr. Quotes. The most quotable man in college football, Mike Sullivan, his career closing today. 48 games started in his career. You can't get better than that. No, he's a quality man, too. Played through a back and ankle injury all year. Only practices two days a week because his back is so bad. Second down and three. Running play, Samuels, and a first down near the 40. So Texas putting a little drive together. Having scored only on a field goal by Pollock. Told that the injury to Bailey was just cramps. So he's all right and we'll be back. Mentioned uh, Gardere now coming under center. Number three all-time Texas high school quarterback. One of the guys ahead of him passing yardage was Ty Detmer. Here he pitches to Hadnott. He's got another first down for the Longhorns. And Russell Maryland's way downfield to make the tackle for the Hurricanes. Hadnot's going to go over 100 today. He's at 98 right now. This game for me is just another reminder why college football should have a playoff system. Here's Miami with two losses, but probably playing its best football of the year today. Florida State beat Penn State the other night, and they could be playing better than anybody in the country, peaking right at the right time. First down, Longhorns. Samuels sliding for about three. Four minutes to go in the third quarter. Miami by 30. How about that? Texas almost doubling the time of possession. That shows you uh, time of possession is extremely overrated. If you can score quickly, it doesn't matter whether you have the That's football right. or not. That's right. Bailey's back in, coming over to cover the bottom of your screen, Johnny Walker. Second down and eight. Looking to the left, and Samuels can't hold on. Inside the 20, would have had the first. Maurice Crum on the coverage. You know, Pete Gardere, when he played at 
Lee High School. He was second team All-State quarterback. He made first team All-Texas as a punter. He's the backup punter to Alex Waits. Last year's press guide, that's how they have him listed, as the backup punter. Could see some action as a backup punter, and here he is now, their star quarterback. Led him to the Cotton Bowl. Third down and eight. Oh, he takes a big hit back at the 36. Kevin Patrick, a freshman, and Shane Curry double up on him at the 34. Sack number eight. There's a flag in the secondary, however. And Daryl Williams, the free safety for Miami, is disgusted. So, going to go against the Canes. Holding defensive team, 10 yard penalty. <laughs> Sebastian and Bebo. I like, I like Bevo in that matchup. Yeah, there's no question. Miami ought to back <laughs> off that one. <laughs> what happens if the two guys let go of the rope? Bevo scared me in the pregame, I can tell you that. Football hit him in the face when the teams were warming up. I thought he was going to run over me. He got a little bit frisky. First down, had not on the run. Mentioned at the start, recruited back in 1959 out of Cleburne, Texas by Darrell Royal. Played for him, captain the team for the legendary coach, won a national championship, came back as an assistant, an assistant to Fred Akers. We had a visit here in the booth at halftime from Coach Royal, now 66, an advisor to the school president. Had not over 100. Second and seven. Gardere lost the football. Patrick took it right away from him. Kevin Patrick pickpockets Peter Gardere. Boy, Gardere just walks off shaking his head. He can't believe it. It's been that kind of day. What an alert play by Patrick. How about this, Jim? When we saw Miami early in the year, here's the play again. Watch this. Here's Patrick, 86. He's the contain guy. Takes his left hand, knocks it loose, just takes it right away from him. But when we saw Miami early in the year, everybody was saying they had to blitz more. They were playing more man coverage because they weren't getting the pressure from their front four. So they had to bring the linebackers. Maryland Curry, Madaris, Hamlet, now Patrick, they're all responding and rising to the occasion today. Four turnovers now for Miami. McGuire. On his back is Brian Jones. Patching up the Big East on the shoulders as Miami will join that conference and hook up some sort of football agreement with the schools there. They, you know, they kind of met their future Big uh, East opponents in a three-game stretch this season. Pitt, Boston College, and Syracuse. Basketball team will join the Big East next season. Leonard Hamilton, he, he will get that program going. Leonard Conley, first down for Miami to the 40-yard line. Think there'll be an alliance between the Big East and the ACC in football? Now, there's going to be, uh, it, it appears, that agreement with the likes of Rutgers and, and West Virginia and an injured player on the field, Claude Jones, who, Tim, we've seen injured in several games this year. Here's a guy who's played hurt all season. Jones, a junior from Fort Lauderdale. I remember the game against Florida State where he had an ankle sprain and, and then got poked in the eye and then still came back to play against Florida State as they dominated that line of scrimmage against the Seminoles and ran right by him that day. Well, we talked about this game, the defense being the most physical we've seen all year. The game you allude to, the Miami-Florida State game, was perhaps the most dominating line play we've seen all year. Miami just came out, ran the ball for over 250 yards. Mario Cristobal will come in at right guard. So we've got the brothers, the Cristobal brothers, at right and left guard. First down, Miami. 
Pulling to the left, Conley. Sprints near the 50. And another flag on the play. This might be against Cristobal for holding, and it will be. How about Conley? LC's back. He was suspended for two games, breaking team rules. Now ready to emotionally explode. Holding offensive team during the run, 10-yard penalty. Miami now, 12 penalties, 152 yards. We've mentioned it's been a record-setting day for the Hurricanes in that department, both in number of penalties and yardage. In, at this point, it appears the only thing in doubt in this ball game is will Miami go over 200 in penalties? <laughs> First and 20. Good catch by Connolly, and he is driven down by Brian Jones. Brian Jones is active. Even though the score is 33 to 3, Miami, Brian Jones is playing his heart out. He's an outstanding linebacker. And what he does is he reads quickly and reacts even quicker. Gets to the ball. He can run very, very well for a guy of his size who's almost 240, 42 pounds. Three receivers to the right, second and 14, closing seconds of the third quarter. On the run, Bethel on the catch into Texas territory. Butts heads and drives inside the 40. 25 yards for Randy Bethel. This big guy was a high school quarterback at a Vero Beach, and his receiver was Dale Dawkins, one of the big-time receivers at Miami who graduated last year. Bethel was throwing to Dale Dawkins back in the high school days, but he outgrew the position. He sure did do that. 6'3", 240. That's his second catch of the day. And that ends the third quarter. Miami 33, Texas 3. Our coverage continues after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the 55th Mobile Cotton Bowl Classic is sponsored by Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. Isn't your car worth the extra protection? Ultra Slim Fast, give us a week, we'll take off the weight. And by Cotton Incorporated for America's cotton growers. Cotton, the fabric of our lives. Welcome back to Dallas, Texas, and the Mobile Cotton Bowl Classic, where Miami is leading Texas 33-3 as we get ready for the start of the fourth quarter. We'd like to wish all of you a very happy new year from all of us here at CBS Sports. Now let's go back upstairs to the booth and Jim and Tim. Andrea, thank you very much. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you, Andrea. Let me extend those wishes to my partner, Tim Brandt. And to you, Jim. Starting the fourth quarter, Miami at the Texas 39. First down. Three receivers to the left, Carroll, Williams, and Hill. But they'll run it right with McGuire. Gain of about six. Winfred Tubbs, backup linebacker, made the hit. McGuire got around the corner and squared up so he could have some leverage when he made contact with the defensive back on that side. Got a low center of gravity and just exploded. He now has nine carries, 33 yards. Give him five on the carry, second and five. Play action, rolling, throwing, and hitting his tight end. Chudzinski taken way out. Lance Gunn fired the pistol. Gain of eight, first catch for Rob Chudzinski. And Tech is on its way to victory, it appears. And if that's the case, that would close out Notre Dame's hopes of winning the championship tonight in the Orange. There are those all over the country that say Georgia Tech is not the best football team in the nation. But I can tell you this. They said they didn't play a strong schedule. Those kids don't make the schedule. They did everything that was asked of them. They're the only unbeaten team in the nation. First down, Canes. Pressure on Erickson. Take him down at the 35. 
And that's five sacks now for the Longhorn defense. Dronett and Lance Wilson. Shane Dronett's had a very active day, hasn't he, Tim? He sure has. He's a, he's a very active type left defensive end. Came in as a linebacker, but ate himself onto the line. Told the coaches when he came in as a freshman, he says, hey, I'm going to start as a freshman. And he did. They say, legend has it, that he wrestles alligators. I heard that. Down in that uh, Golden Triangle area near Port Arthur and Beaumont. From Orange is where he's from. I'll tell you this, I would not go with him down in those Everglades to disprove that myth. <laughs> yeah, cancel my trip, too. <laughs> Second and 17. The receiver fell down. Thomas, and let's go back down to John Dockery. Jim, you see Frenchman Kenny Neal, number six, on the sideline from Memphis, Tennessee, and you have to think that his thoughts may be far away. You see his mom, Karen, had hoped to come to the game today, but she is in the Army Reserves, a second lieutenant, and as we speak, her unit was called up, and they're on their way to Saudi Arabia, so his thoughts may be far away, and our thoughts, of course, go to a uh, happy new year to all the men and women in the Persian Gulf with a hope for a swift and safe return. Back to you, Jim. Here, here, Doc. Third and 17 for the Canes. Complete to Carroll for a first down. I thought this might get intercepted. Grady Kavnis was in the area, but Carroll positioned himself to bring it down. This is where it goes from being a passing attack to a receiving attack. The receiver makes this play. Carroll has led the nation in receiving yards most of this entire season. Came into this game with 61 catches. He averages 16 yards per catch. That one for 20. He's got eight catches today for 135 yards and two touchdowns. Running play, Alex Johnson. Zips it to the five. Tubbs on the tackle. Here's a guy, Johnson, who will graduate in May in four years with a business degree. He's the fastest running back in the club. 4-4 four, four speed, big play threat. Had a bad ankle in the middle of the season, but he's running back to form now. His replacement are actually joined now by Shannon Crowell. Second and one for Miami. A pitch to Johnson. Oh, Johnson dropped again by Dronett. And a flag thrown on the back end of it. You know, that penalty, too, nullifies an outstanding play by Drenette. Just played it off, came up, great pursuit. You'll see him here from behind. He goes after Johnson. I never did see the face mask, did you? Never got uh, the face mask. Nope, never did. Grab Not him by the once. shoulder pad. Not once. You know what we didn't mention about Drenette? He's a Golden Glove boxing champion. So I heard one of the Miami guys say it's about time. They better be careful with Drenette. First and goal for the Canes. Alex Johnson, a one-yard gain. Lance Wilson and Todd Hunt on the tackle. has thrown three touchdowns and he came over for a quick word to Dennis Erickson and said we could hit the tight end second and goal looking for the tight end touchdown Miami Randy Bethel
Chris, that should prove to Texas A&M that the Texas coaches aren't always listening to our feed. <laughs> point blocked they can return it that breaks Huerta's record Gunn is running it back going for two points and dropped at the 40 and another flag is dropped late at the end of that play Carlos Huerta had been successful on 145 straight Dronette got the uh, the blocked point after. Again, ending Huerta's point after streak, the all-time record in college football. Joe Moore, the holder, is on the field. Now, it's not unusual for Dronette to block a kick. That's his third block this year. He's six foot six, and they use that height in the kicking game. We heard the Ericsons talking about this play on the sideline. Go to the tight end. The tight end can beat them. They isolate the tight end on the safety, and you see Bethel here working against Richard. Stanley Richard, the safety, no contest. They put the ball out there. That's the fourth touchdown pass for Erickson. That's a Cotton Bowl record. Now how about this? 26 of 39 Miami points, Jim, have come after Texas turnovers. Draw net. Watch 81 in the middle coming through. Knocking it down. Lance Gunn retrieved it and was tackled in a penalty, a personal foul penalty. What else? The way it's been going, Miami. And that backs him up to the 20 to kick it here. And that's Walker. And a good tackle at the 33 and another flag. What a surprise that is. I got to think some of the officials' arms are getting tired from, from reaching back and throwing those flags. Running out of laundry. You mentioned the four touchdown passes by Craig Erickson is a new Cotton Bowl record. During the run by Clippin, Clippin, offensive team. And the last, well, it breaks the record of three touchdown passes in a Cotton Bowl game. Last performed by Doug Flutie. going on to the Hula and the Japan All-Star Bowls. Phil Brown is coming to the backfield for Texas. Gardner almost intercepted, and he is. What an interception. Herbert James on the pickoff. A lot of guys getting playing time. Erickson's over on the sidelines. We just heard him making his social plans. He's talking about going swimming. Meanwhile, look at the pick. Herbert James, who had filled in a little while for Robert Bailey. They were high school teammates, in fact, Bailey and James. Pass was intended for Derek Duke. Look at him playing it inside out, staying in the hip pocket. Steps in front at the last second and then just uses strength to take it away. New quarterback for Miami. They brought in Gino Toretta. Toretta hands off to Conley. 50 moves to the outside and tackled at the 21. You had a feeling they were going to bring a new quarterback in when Erickson's over there deciding what he's going to do on his next couple of days off. <laughs> well, Gino Toretta has seen action throughout his career at Miami, including four starts last year. Tech is, Tech is tacking on an impressive win today against Nebraska. And I'll tell you something, Nebraska's not a bad football team. They talk about a weak schedule, but Nebraska's fairly strong. I mentioned that Gino Toretta has had some playing time there. Taking Cristobal off, he's a little bit shaken up. But Toretta has not thrown a touchdown this year, has thrown one interception. But he's 21 of 41 in the passing department. Consider this, he's the uh, backup quarterback, and he holds the Miami record for most yards passing in the game. 
is all those great quarterbacks, the Testaverdes and Walsh's and Kozars and Kelly's, and Erickson, for that matter. And he threw for 468 last year in a game against San Jose State. Almost 500 yards. That's a Miami record. Crystal ball to the bench. Boy, even Bevo's worn out. Where's the beef? <laughs> Second down and 10. Crowell out of motion. Toretta hits his man. No, he dropped it. Crowell working on the sidelines and in his defense, the pass a little behind him. How about Erickson's numbers today, Tim? 17 of 26, 272 yards and four touchdowns. Look at where he... He threw him down the middle. He was one for two. Basically took things outside and underneath. Watch this. Seven for 11 on the left side. Three for four on the right side. Like that left side. Mike Swanson had a tough time keeping up with the numbers today. Filling in for Roger Riley. It's needed a calculator. Third and ten. Breaking through is Connolly for the first. Still on his feet. Connolly will not be denied. Touchdown Miami. Just tied for most points scored by a team in the Cotton Bowl, tying Boston College in its victory over Houston back in 85. But they can get the record, hold the record all to themselves if Huerta makes the point after. You think he can handle the pressure? <laughs> Intense pressure. <laughs> he did have his PAT streak snapped on the last attempt, but the all-time score at Miami will give Miami the Cotton Bowl scoring record. There it is, splitting the sticks. How about Leonard Conley? Senior. You don't want to analyze it, you just want to admire it. As a guy coming back from a suspension, emotionally, he's just exploding. mask once face mask twice no flags couldn't stop him he goes in for the touchdown and now the celebration begins it's the largest lead in cotton bowl history added up 43 point lead I'll tell you miami has certainly met the challenge and more today and to my partner, Tim Brandt, we know you've got new challenges ahead this year, and I just want to say a heartfelt thanks for your friendship and for all you've done for CBS the last four years, and especially all your friends out here at College Football. This crew wants to wish you all the best, and we're going to miss you. We're going to be friends forever. Jim, I appreciate that. You're a special talent with an amazing amount of class and compassion, and you're right. I walk away with some great friends and a lifetime of memories. We'll meet again. I look forward to it. It'll be my pleasure. Miami uh, tagged again with a 15-yard infraction, moving in on 200. Excess celebration, they say. So they kick from the 20 again. Adrian Walker out to the 40. It's been a record-setting day all the way around for Miami. Let's go back down to John Dockery. You know, Jim, amidst all the celebration by Miami, a sad moment as Lewis Cristobal heads towards the locker room. He was in considerable pain and groggy. Uh, no official report. But as you can see, they are taking him to the locker room right now. Texas has brought in its second-string quarterback. Jimmy Saxton will come in, replacing Peter Gartier. Saxton is a freshman from Austin. 
has got another freshman in the backfield, Phil Brown. Flags against Texas. They were moving at the snap. Stephen Clark was. Miami made refuse the penalty. Mark Caesar bringing down Phil Brown. So Gardair is out. He exits and what has had to have been the longest afternoon of his life. But two more years of football ahead, and he's Billy had a motion. terrific season. Offensive team declined. He has now. had that. You know, 187 penalty yards against Miami alone. Now listen to this, Jim. 187 penalty yards against Miami. Texas offense has only gotten 147 yards today. Gardere's final number, 7 of 16, three interceptions, a total of only 40 yards passing, and he was sacked eight times. Second and 12, they run the option with Saxton. No. Tell you what, you talk about taking out the quarterback. Mark Caesar. Well, Caesar read a scouting report because Jimmy Saxton comes in as the running quarterback, 4 5 speed, and he's an option guy, so right away you look for the option. Eight minutes, 20 seconds remaining, third and 17. Saxton, the son of a former Longhorn great by the same name. He's a teammate, in fact, of McWilliams. Saxton hits his pass near the 50. Mike Davis, and that's about two yards shy of a first. A gain of 16. And they're bringing out the punting unit. A lot of the young guys will get experience now in this game. It's long been over. 11 minutes to go in the third period. I think we thought it was out of reach then, said so. Now it's 46 to three, obviously over with 7.45 left. So just play everybody. Waits with no one deep. Oop, that's a backward bounce for the Longhorns and down it at the 23. Not only has this been a hurricane running across the plains of Texas, it's been a flat-out explosion. You know, our cameraman extraordinaire, Herman Lang, has been coming here since 19... Well, 1964 was his first year. It's his 26th Cotton Bowl. It's good to have him again. He's worked every Masters, in fact, at CBS. Herman. 1964 Masters. That had to be Arnold Palmer, huh? Very good. I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon Crowell. What do you think, uh, now that uh, we see the way Tech has played today, and to give you credit, you've been saying all week Tech was going to win that game. Miami's performance. I'll tell you something. A lot of people have written Miami out of the national title. And if Georgia Tech wins, then Georgia Tech should win the title. Look at this. Over the head of Spencer. And a few boos here for the Longhorn fans who have remained. Most of the people have gone on home on this bitter cold day. Tech will win it. So they'll be watching the Orange Bowl tonight with tremendous interest. And I still give Notre Dame a little bit of the edge. I think Colorado is a better football team than Notre Dame. But I think Notre Dame's going to win because Colorado's not a great passing team. Lou Holtz will challenge them to throw. That's what beat them last year, although they have put more emphasis and improved their passing game. I like Notre Dame tonight as well, but Miami will not be able to jump tech in the polls, like I said. No, Miami will not be able to jump Tech, and how about this? Mike Sullivan and his mother. His parents are immigrants from Ireland. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> this is great. Mike always told us, my, my folks don't understand football at all, but they, they go to the games, and the fact they came down from Chicago, they're, they're home now, and, Watched him play against Notre Dame this year. 
Here's the punt to Samuels. And taken down at the 45. 34-yard punt. Coleman Bell, the tight end of the future at Miami, made the tackle. I can understand that mentality. You know, I'm Irish, and Irishmen always love a good time. Yeah. You don't have to understand the game to know where there's going to be a good time. Six minutes remaining. And it's what is the most lopsided Cotton Bowl in its history? And one of the longest. Here's the end of round to Davis. Back him up yardage. Good play by the Miami defense. We've got the wild card weekend coming up. Saints and the Bears on Sunday. You'll see it on CBS. That'll back be the final playoff game of the weekend. And 3.30 Eastern time, we hope you'll be with us for New Orleans at Chicago. That last tackle made by Dexter Siegler. Movement on the right side for Texas. <laughs> and the game goes on and on. Dead ball. Dead ball. Illegal motion, offensive line, five-yard penalty. The largest point differential in Cotton Bowl history was 1945 when Oklahoma A&M shut out TCU 34-0. Fiction, in fact, from Jim's almanac. So the 34 points exceeded now, obviously, by Miami's 43-point differential. There's a sack by Kenny Lopez, a freshman from Key West, Florida. And another flag on the field. Tech has won it over Nebraska. Congratulations to Bobby Ross and the Yellow Jackets. Boy, let me second that. Bobby Ross was my linebacker coach at the University of Maryland. He's a quality guy, and he is an outstanding football coach. Georgia Tech folks hung with him through a tough span. He lost 16 straight ACC games. And he comes back, and he's got a shot now, a legitimate shot at the national title. Come on, Big Ed! Another personal foul against Miami. And the Canes have gone over 200 yards. And penalty yardage, 202. <laughs> Running it is Phil Brown into Miami territory at the 46. And down to the Doxter. John? You know, Jim, when you think about it, Miami has a remarkable group of 50-year seniors, five in all. Sullivan, Handy, Cristobal, Chudzinski, Russell, Maryland. And what they've achieved... It's just incredible. Look at these numbers, 29-0 and 0 at home, five major bowls, two national championships, lost only five games in five years. And if Miami finishes first to second this year in the AP, the only group of seniors ever to finish first or second over a five-year period. And on top of that, all have graduated and are now pursuing second degrees. A remarkable group. Saxton on the keep. Saxton inside the 25 and down to the 22. There's a red shirt freshman playing with some emotion. He doesn't even care the score is 46 to 3 right now. He's just playing hard. He's trying to gain some yardage, playing with some enthusiasm, playing for the future. 24 yards by Jimmy Saxton. His father arrived with the Longhorns at a Cotton Bowl and as a, a youngster he was a backup quarterback later switched to an all Southwest Conference All-America running back there could even be a chance that someday Saxton will play as a, as a running back he's got great speed the option sprint quarterback with a flag on the field inside the 20 and down to the 12. Kip Vickers made the tackle. Flag back at the 28. Bebo looks like he's a little perked up now that he sees the Longhorns driving. He won't like that call. You know, Doc made a great point a moment ago about the seniors who all graduated. Chudzinski and Sullivan have both received NCAA post 
graduate scholarships, the first two in Miami history from the football team, and they'll continue their education, having already received their undergraduate degrees. They also, those five fulfilled seniors, there's Chud, as they know him, played in all of the major New Year's Day bowls they were eligible for, the Fiesta, the Cotton, the Sugar, and the Orange in their careers. That's great accomplishment. Another flag on the field with Brown racing to the 20. That was fun at the luncheon the other day when they awarded the academic honors to uh, Chud. Listening to him speak, listen to the reaction of his team. Offside, defense, violation, neutral zone, penalty is declined. Did an outstanding job. You know it's not easy for a young guy to get up and stand in front of a big room like that with hundreds and hundreds of people. Was that you or was that Bevo? <laughs> <laughs> that one was Bevo. <laughs> Make a New Year's resolution? Yeah, we got a little contest going. Sure do. I'll see you at the Kemper. <laughs> right. Step on the scales, okay? Absolutely. Saxton trying to find the end zone for Texas. Down to the 10. <laughs> Terrace Harris on the tackle. You saw that shot of the guy waving the flag by the band area. Most of the people have cleared out. That's what you call a loyal fan. He's staying with them throughout, hoping Texas will find the end zone before the afternoon's complete. Yeah. It was 19 to three at halftime, and Miami scoring 27 more in the second half. First down for Texas, Brown, a loss of a yard. You remember how that first half ended? Miami went for it, fourth and goal from the three, and was denied as Cash, Kerry Cash, made the reception out of bounds. That's the closest Texas has been to, to scoring a touchdown today. But you know what, Jim? I don't think that really had anything to do with the, oh, the switch no. of momentum. I mean, the momentum and the tone had been set by Miami, and they just dominated from the flip of the coin on. I agree with you, Tim. Second and 11. They pitch it outside, and Brown gets to the six. I'll tell you when they set the tone. When Miami came onto the field first, left the ramp, came onto the field, went to the sideline, and then came right back to the ramp end zone and watched the Longhorns come breaking out and pointed at them, looked at them, stood right there, watched them walk onto the field, stared down at them. I, I think it was major, major intimidation move by Miami, and it, it may have affected Texas. Third down and five, timeout called by Texas. Saxton will talk it over. We'll be right back. having manhandled Texas today. There were a lot of people in this area who thought the prospects for the Southwest Conference were great today after what A&M put on BYU in the Holiday Bowl. Put a 60 on them. Tonight on CBS, we should have called a while ago, Rescue 911. <laughs> You're right. Followed by her wicked ways. Third and five, Texas, quarterback draw, and no game. Smothered by Vickers, but there is a flag on the field. This was such a tragedy, though, they may not have responded. <laughs> hey, Jim, forget about what's going to happen tonight. Forget about the polls. Who do you think right now is playing the best football in America? I think Miami is the best college football team in the land, but they don't deserve to win the championship. They had their opportunities, but they let the whack beat up on them. 
BYU beat them, and San Diego State gave them a close match. I think they are the best team in college football. So if there was a playoff and they were going into a playoff right now, you'd give them the edge. I, I would absolutely, without hesitation, give Miami the edge. I wouldn't count out Florida State in that situation. Fourth down for the Horns. One more try for the goal line. Throwing and incomplete. With a minute left. I must add, however, I do not believe Miami should should win this championship this season with its losses in a close game against San Diego State that dropped them from three to four. Jimmy Stamos, Lou Codian, Mike Swanson, Roger Riley, everybody up here in the booth, Happy New Year to you. You did a great job today. You know, the guys down in the booth, as we look at the record set today, our producer, Michael Burks, director by Joe Assetti. We've had a lot of fun. We're going to flash back at some of the great moments of the year just a little while. George Barris, who did an outstanding job this year in the college football today. There's a running play by Patton. Joe Terry was directing back in the studio all year. Mike Cohen and Lance Barrow coming back home to Texas for the Cotton Bowl. Our associate directors, John Gerstel and Kenny Mack, our, our BAs. Don't forget Doc down on the sidelines. <laughs> Senior producer David Winter and executive producer Ted Shaker. A happy new year to the whole gang. Biggest blowout in Cotton Bowl history. The dream season continues. <laughs> <laughs> and a good run out to the 18-yard line by Patton to close it out. Texas was dancing with wolves today as the Hurricanes blew them out 46 to 3. So for Tim Brandt, John Dockery, Andrea Joyce, and Mike Francesa, this is Jim Nance saying so long from the Cotton Bowl. Next Saturday, tune into CBS for a women's basketball doubleheader as Purdue faces Auburn and Georgia takes on Iowa starting at 1.30 Eastern. It's been a great college football season. Our last telecast, we'd like to share many of the great moments. Tim, this is for you. And for all of you folks who join us this season, thanks a lot. And look back at another great year of college football.